It is time for something very different today. Um, This is a series that may not take off. I may forget to keep up or whatever, but it's something I'd quite like to do. Uh, And something I've kind of wanted to do for a while, that whenever there's a new series, a new big series, um, I've always kind of wanted to get in from the ground floor, start reviewing it from episode one, and as they air, discuss it, uh, as a lot of people on YouTube and other platforms already do anyway. So, uh, as you can probably tell from the title, I've decided to, you know, maybe start reviewing uh, Boruto, uh, Naruto Next Generation, I believe is the full title, Boruto, Naruto Next Generation. Uh, I'm just going to refer to it as Boruto, obviously, because I think that's what everyone does, or Boruto NG. No, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just going to give a summary and some of my thoughts on the first episode, which aired on the 5th of April, so I'm two days late already. By the time this goes up, I may be three days late. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so let's jump straight into it. I'm going to accompany this, obviously, with some pictures in the background. Uh, I'm not going to put any video clips because I don't know how legal that is. I don't think it's very legal. So I'm going to avoid that. I'm just going to put screenshots just to... Um, just to add to my points, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about and such. So, anyway, let's begin. So, the first... Uh... So, well, first off, the episode itself, the uh, the very first, like, minute or 40 seconds or whatever of the episode is a time skip into the future. It's a... Um, I guess it's kind of, you know, it shows the conclusion of Boruto, maybe, or at least, you know, the first few arcs. I don't know how long this is going to go on. I don't think anyone does, really. Um, but yeah, so we see teenage or adult Boruto. I'm going to say teenage. He looks about 18 or so. Um, and he is on top of the cliffs in uh, Konoha, where all the Kage's faces are. And he's facing off with a kind of bad guy. So the bad guy he refers to is uh, called Kawaki. We don't you know, he says about three lines of dialogue, so we don't actually know who he is, his relationship to Boruto. He does mention that he's going to send Boruto to the same place he sent Naruto, his his dad, obviously. Um, that, you know, that's unclear as well. I don't think it means that Naruto has been killed. I think it means he's been sent off to some place, so, you know, maybe some Genjutsu prison. I don't know. Um, you know, the, the finale for Naruto Shippuden was... It's pr- pretty crazy, so I-, I can see a lot of possibilities for where exactly it is that Naruto is held. Uh, reminiscent a bit of Boruto the movie. Um, the- there was that guy that kind of wanted to remake the Infinite Tsukiyomi tree thing and I think wanted to kidnap. I can't remember, I watched Boruto a while ago. I do need to rewatch it, um, probably. But anyway, so in response to that, uh, Boruto, you know, replies that he's still a um, shinobi, which is interesting because later on in the episode we do see when he's he's younger, he makes a point of saying, well, you know, I, I'm I'm not my dad, I don't really want to be a ninja or a shinobi, I want to be my own person. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, he comes around to accepting that he is a shinobi, he is trained to do that. But anyway, so as he says that, um, and I didn't manage to cap- capture a very good screenshot here, I should have captured maybe a few, but it passes in like a second, but basically, uh, Boruto's right arm glows, uh, as does his eye. Now, so does Kawaki as well. Kawaki glows kind of orange, Boruto glows kind of blue. It's all to do, if you've seen Boruto the movie, which you probably have if you're watching this, you'll know that there's that weird like technology thing, the capsule thing they use. So I assume this is obviously several years in the future. You know, this this is kind of the advancement of those capsule things. He seems to be kind of... Is he the chakra or it's technology mixed with chakra? Which I think is what they're going for. Anyway, so uh, as we skip ahead just to that very brief thing, um, you know, uh, that so we saw, I don't know, 40 seconds or something of that. Then it just pulls back and shows that the all Kage heads of Konoha are destroyed or, like, cut in half. Which seems to be like it was kind of, I don't know, maybe it's there for dramatic effect, but it kind of looks like someone's purposely done that, which leads me to believe that Kawaki has some links to the Hidden Leaf Village, that, you know, he'd go up and want to vandalise the heads. So that was pretty cool, I thought. Um, 
And then in transitions, in just showing Conor Hart, uh, you know, at the start of the Boruto tale when he's like, you know, 10 or whatever. Um, so next, I want to j- just want to, holy shit, I want to just say my praises for the title screen. Um, one thing that drew me in to Boruto that I didn't really expect is the fact that the series seems to be very focused on um, big, bright, colourful things, kind of like technology, stuff like that. It kind of, if Naruto was the 1940s, as it were, where sort of everything was quite, you know, basic and everything was physical and manual, I feel like Boruto is kind of representative of, you know, the 80s, the 90s in comparison to that, where uh, I didn't get any good screen caps of this, but I think the title screen shows Rafka well, and that there is a big focus on digital things. Um, there's, well, I think in Boruto the movie, there's like a movie district, someone's playing a handheld games console. There's, you know, it's clearly progressed a lot in like 20 years. Well, no, less than 20 years as well. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like 15 to 20 years, um, which has links to a character that we'll see in a second. Um, anyway, so yeah, the the title, title, uh, the intro, like animation is great. Music, I'm not like really, really hooked on yet. I think if I listen to it like 20 times, as as happens with most Naruto intros, even the ones I'm not that fond of, after you know like 20 or so episodes they're played, I kind of, I don't know, they they just get into my head. They're pretty catchy, so I assume this is going to be the same. I wasn't wild on it initially, but I've only listened to it once, so it's not really good judgment on my behalf. Um, so we'll skip ahead just to, well, I'm not skipping ahead, like a minute or so. Uh, the intro of the episode is a little kind of generic. Now, actually, one thing I did quite like is that the episode starts out with a free running. Like, you see uh, Boruto and Shikamaru's kid, which I can't remember his name. They did say in the episode, I need to look that up. Um, but they're running through town. But they're not, they're not doing it in the average ninja style of Naruto. They're not like just, you know, running across rooftops with their arms behind them. They're kind of, it's very clearly parkour. It's it's aimed after parkour, and I find that's really interesting as well. That's another kind of thematic advancement. So, you know, whereas you had the traditional uh, ninja ways of Naruto, in Boruto they're more urban. They feel a little more new and well, like a next generation. So in that regard, I you know. That was a nice little touch. I thought people may not like that. I don't know. I really like it. Um, and yeah, so we just see him hang out with Shikamaru's kid. They're, they hop on a train. A uh, train is going to be a very big part of this episode. To get a burger from a, a fast food restaurant. You don't see the fast food restaurant, but it's implied, obviously. So that's another kind of cool thing in that, you know, they have their version of McDonald's and stuff. Again, uh, sort of representing new modern kind of things in comparison to old ninja ways. Um, and yeah, and we just, you know, get to see a bit of Boruto's life. You get to see that he has a family, he has a little sister, Himawari, and obviously Hinata, his father's the Hokage, Naruto. And it, it's an interesting dynamic in that he's not alone. He's clearly, he's got quite a big family, really. Um, and, you know, he's got friends and stuff, so he's not like Naruto in that regard. He's not some lonely little kid who's sad all the time he's he's rebellious but he's not sad uh or anything uh which you know is interesting so anyway uh halfway through the episode we uh he sees a boy i think denki is a boy correct me if i'm wrong but i think denki is a boy um very effeminate looking but then so is borrowed on a lot of the cast so you know um yeah he sees a kid being bullied in an alleyway by some you know punks who are demanding more money or whatever um, and yeah, so he saves him, uh, Boruto saves him, sorry, by chasing off the bullies with his clone jutsu, which he already knows. It's also implied that Boruto's pretty good, like he's a pretty good ninja, and he hasn't even started in the academy yet. So, you know, it's implied, obviously, that his father trained him and other things. And I think, well, Sasuke will train him later, as we see in Boruto the movie, if that's canon. I assume that's canon. Anyway, so yeah, he saves Gen- Denki. They walk around a bit. And also, later on, Denki reveals that his father is the owner of... Oh, oh I should have got the screen cap. Okay, I'll I'll put that in at the bottom in a little uh, caption here. But is the owner of a big tech company, which Boruto is amazed by. So presumably, 
the tech company is kind of bringing the future of Konoha. So he is the son or daughter, possibly, of you know the owner of that big, big tech company, which is really cool. Again, so the whole technological advancement part of Boruto is tied to a character, a specific character, uh, who he's quite rich. I think he's sort of he's bullied by the bullies and he doesn't seem to mind that he's given them money because he's obviously rolling in it because his dad's really wealthy. Uh, you know, still not a good reason to give your money to bullies, but whatever. Uh, so then we continue on. You know, a few minutes. Uh, Boruto says goodbye. Oh, and so the their entrance to the Ninja Academy is tomorrow. So it takes place in the day before their entrance. So they both say goodnight. Uh, he's like, yeah, cool. I'll see you at the academy, I guess, Denki. And then we see a part that Denki's just walking, you know, around his house, and he gets possessed by a shadow thing. It's only it, like the the whole sequence takes about fifteen seconds, and we barely see anything. Obviously, that's going to be a mystery. That's going to you know continue on. But he's basically possessed, and he's kind of uh, kind of like the curse mark in a bit. I, I saw it as a kind of a reference to the curse mark, which is cool with me. Um, so the next day, we see Boruto running to the uh, entrance, the Ninja Academy entrance uh, ceremony. That's the word. Uh, and, you know, he's running through town. And then he sees Denki from afar. And then, so he looks at Denki and is like, oh, hey, there he is. And then he sees the big shadow possession thing. And when he does that, the camera switches to look at Boruto. And as you can see on screen, he's got something going on with his right eye. So I'm not sure if that's because, obviously, uh, he's, you know, he, he's a child of someone who has a Byakugan. Maybe that's it coming along. I think, personally, because there was the whole, you know, with the end of Shippuden, um, it was revealed that Sasuke and Hinata, from, they're from one bloodline of the two brothers that came from uh, Moon Lady, especially Alien, I can't remember. Um, oh, Kaguya. There we are, so the sons of Kaguya. So one of them is visual jutsus, one of them is like chakra-based jutsu. So Naruto is from one line, Hinata's from the other. So maybe it's that because they combined his right eye is sort of the embodiment of the perfect combination of these two chakra lines, uh, well, sort of ninja heritage lines coming to make a child again. Um, obviously that's going to be explored later on. And his right eye did flash in the flash or would be saw right at the start of the episode. So I'm guessing that's kind of something. Now, he does mention later on, and I didn't get a screenshot of this either, but it happens again briefly when he sees Denki later on. And he does kind of put his hand up to his right eye and go, oh, no, not again. So it's clearly maybe a problem that's recently started cropping up or something. So that's going to be a plot point later on, obviously. Um. So yeah, then he loses track of Denki, but we catch up, and Denki has lured the bullies into an abandoned train, his father owns the train system, um, with some money, and then, so he closes the door, and um, yeah, so he he starts the train up, and you know, the bullies are trapped inside, and he reveals his plan that on the other side of the village, he's put another abandoned train, on the same track, but on the other side, obviously, and He's just going to make them collide, basically. Uh, this is because of his possession. Obviously, he's clearly driven mad by his possession. Pretty evil. Um, but yeah, so, you know, his plan is pretty pretty standard. He just wants to, I assume, kill his bullies, because it's clearly taking over, you know, whatever possessed him has taken over his ill feelings towards his bullies, and is like, oh, cool, let's just kill them. Um, so that'll be interesting. It does go away. Um, his possession when so Boruto obviously finds him and comes along. He basically, I think he tries to stop Denki from attacking the bullies, but goes to follow up the train. Denki goes to grab him, and in doing so, has some fond memories of Boruto. And then his possession stops, like the the shadow thing leaves his body. I don't think that's permanent. I think that's just for now, and I think he's probably gonna get possessed, you know, back again in. Maybe the next episode, maybe in a few episodes' time, but that's going to be a plot point as well, um, I think. And then, so yeah, so the episode ends then with uh, the he they get the bullies off the train, uh, but they continue onwards, uh, Boruto and Denki, to the entrance ceremony because they're late, and they do so by 
ri uh, riding the train off its tracks, off a cliff, and into the Kage-like stone face of Naruto, uh, which obviously gets people talking, and Boruto suspended for presumably like a week or something. Uh, and that basically concludes the episode, but my gosh, a, a lot happened. Obviously, this is the first episode of, well, I don't want to say a new anime, because it's kind of a continuation, but this is quite removed to the point where, you know, they do have to establish a lot of new characters. So, overall, I'm going to say that I think it's off to a pretty strong start. Um, and also, so, well, I've never said this in any videos or anything, I've never really made uh, many Naruto-related videos, but I personally really like the concept um, of Boruto, that they keep, you know, they're continuing the thing. So a lot of people, obviously, they're a bit burnt out, the fact that Naruto and Naruto Shippuden went on for, like, 12 years or something. And that's cool. I mean, I completely understand. People are in it for the for the storyline, and it took it, it took way too long. Really, there was, there was like, over 100 episodes of Shippuden, of, of pure fillers that did not add anything at all. And I, I, I do think that was kind of un inexcusable, so I can totally understand why people are burnt out on this. I personally, though, really like the fact that Boruto is set so far in the future because it kind of sets up an interesting thing. So if you only wanted to watch Naruto for the main plot, if you only wanted to see what you know how your characters ended up, what you know the people you liked and stuff and what happened, you know, Shippuden was a jumping off point. The you know, the wedding episode at the end of Shippuden, the last one, episode 500, that's fine. If you don't if you don't care, you know, to see what happens in the future, then that's a good jumping off point. I think this, this kind of uh, you know plays off the fact that it's just it's for the people who really liked the characters and the world that want to see how this goes. Because one thing I really did start liking in Shippuden is the fact that they would spend a while uh, just exploring, you know, sort of the third ninja war or uh, some, some you know just something that happened like a hundred or two hundred years before. You know the 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 main timeline of Naruto, and it kind of it just fleshed out the world and made it feel like it had a bit of history. Um, you know, if, if like there's there's lots of fictional universes that do this, Marvel, DC, a uh, Song of Ice and Fire's universe. You know, I, I don't want to be crucified for comparing Boruto to a Game of Thrones here, but they do kind of share similarities in that. You know, the world is fleshed out beyond just the main storyline and the timeline. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm I'm pretty darn excited to watch the rest of Boruto. It could end up being hundreds of episodes and not going anywhere, and I, hell, I could drop this. This could literally be, like, I don't know, my episode one of a three-episode series that I end up dropping or something. But I have pretty high hopes of Boruto. The next episode seems to take place in kind of... Uh, well, it, it just him joining the Academy, presumably meeting... Uh, meeting some of the ninjas, which I'm really excited for, because they're the kids of the cast that you know I grew up with and stuff. We've already seen Choji's daughter. Uh, I think the preview shows Ino and Sai's daughter. So there's, it's going to be pretty fun overall, I think. Uh, so I will be making an episode about next week's one as well. I hopefully it'll be, you know, it'll be um, on time maybe the day after it comes out, hopefully, as opposed to possibly three days after it comes out, but who knows. So thank you very much for watching. I may try and get other people on uh, if I can find other people who watch Boruto and like it. If you do watch Boruto and would like to be on this review discussion thing, let me know, you know, via message or comments or whatever, because it would be cool to have a group discussion on this as opposed to just me talking at you for almost 20 minutes. My God, it is actually almost 20 minutes. Well, thank you, and stay tuned for more Boruto episode things every week, if I remember to do them.